Hi, welcome to Daddy Curb's farm. Or I should probably say welcome back to Daddy Curb's farm. It's been a long time since I've been able to make a video. I have checked on the bees, but I haven't made too many videos lately. Life circumstance, family challenges, broken uh, computer, lots of things have uh, interrupted my ability to make these regular productions, but I'm glad to be here with you today. Thank you for joining me here on the Daddy Curb's farm. We're gonna get in here and take a look at the apiary take a look at the hives and just maybe give you some updates and see how the hives are doing. We've reached a point where it is now 100 degrees out and it'll probably be this way for the next 60 days or so. It's June or beginning of, uh, it's not quite June yet, we're still in May and uh, it's hot already. It's already 100 degrees and we're expecting that for a while. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the challenges of beekeeping in the heat, mostly for the beekeeper, and a few of the things that I'm doing to make sure that I don't come back here and get heat exhaustion and fall down and nobody knows where I'm at. One of the things that I'm gonna be talking about is this new vintage jacket. I just got it, I uh, bought it off Amazon, and it's got the you know, lots of mesh, so the breeze comes through here, whatever breeze there is, I'll get a little bit of breeze through this suit and it won't be quite as hot. Something else that I like to make sure is that I have a hat, cover my eyes, keep the sun out of my eyes, and lots of water. Normally when the weather is normal, you know, and it's not 100 degrees, I don't bother bringing water back to the apiary, but uh, today I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of water. Before I came out here today, I made sure I was well hydrated, so I don't want to come out here and be dehydrated. And then also in between inspections, I have some cool water that I can, um, you know, just pour through my veil if I don't want to take my veil off and just keep hydrated to make sure that uh, I don't get overheated. It's really easy to get overheated while beekeeping. There's a lot of activities that I can do where it seems like I can work all day in the sun and I'm okay, but coming back here in a jacket and working with these hives, lifting the boxes, it just seems like it's really easy to uh, get overheated quickly. So those are some things that we need to talk about and to be prepared for. The hives look good. So far, just sitting here, there's lots and lots of activity coming and going out of these hives. It's hot, it's dry, and that's a dangerous combination. We have to be extremely careful when we're using our smoker and you know creating this fire in this can that we're not uh, gonna create a, a grass fire out here in the apiary. Some of the things I like to keep in my pocket while I beekeep is a queen clip just in case I need to pick a queen up, keep her safe. A box of matches, just so they're always in my, my pocket here and ready to go. A knife, for whatever reason, for cutting, lifting, prying. I like to just have that available. And of course, not in my pocket usually, but the hive tool that goes in and, and uh, helps me move all the frames around and lift the boxes off. I'd like to point out too that there's lots of uh, growth going on, some grasses and wildflowers. It's really beautiful. Uh, what I've heard, what I understand is that the bees typically won't forage and harvest from anything within 20 feet of their hive. So most of these wildflowers in here are not going to be utilized, at least by my bees. I don't know how true that is, but it makes me feel better about coming back here and cutting it all down with a scythe once I get the scythe put together. A big thank you to my patrons from Patreon. The money that they give every month helped me to buy a scythe. It's up at the house, it's ready to go, all except putting the handles on, so it's, it's not really ready to go. But we're gonna get the handles put on. One of the videos coming up real soon will be clearing out the apiary with the scythe. The bees do not like the weed eater. They don't like the, the motors, the high-pitched sounds of the motors. They don't really like it when I drive the, the mowers back here either. So coming back here with something where it's just a blade that I can cut the grass and the, the wildflowers down out of this area will be really helpful um, 
for me to keep this clean and for the bees not to get agitated. It's kind of nice back here right now. It's hot, but just sitting back here and feeling a gentle, gentle breeze and listening to the bees in the background, that's really pleasant. All right, I'm all suited up. My smoker's going and I got my water. I'm ready to go. I did bring a few boxes on the, uh, the cart back here just in case I need to add boxes to the hives. I'm not sure what to expect. I know last time I was out here, there was a lot of brood baby bees, which means that the population of these hives is growing. And uh, I don't know in the last couple weeks. In the live show yesterday that I produce on Saturday mornings, I do a live show. And I talked about that I inspected these hives last week. But once I started thinking about it, it's been two weeks actually since the last inspection. So I know there's a lot of growth. I just want to make sure um, that we're not they're not getting overcrowded and... I'm giving them all the real estate that they need. First up is going to be hive number one. We're just going to crack it open and see how it looks on the inside. First of all, you can check out there is a lot. I'm sitting right in their flight path. They're kind of coming out to the, uh, to the right, so I'm right in their flight path and they don't like that but you can see lots of good activity going in and out there. Already I can feel my heart pounding and uh, the sweat forming. I can also feel a tiny little breeze through this vest, so it's, it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to do. In my normal canvas bee suit, I would be already in a sauna. I'm gonna give the bees just a little bit of a puff here on top. Let that smoke settle down into the hive. A little bit underneath. A little bit in front. Look at that. They built lots of comb up on top of that. They're connecting the, the comb on top the inner cover and now that you can see that they're they're eating the honey out of that since I broke it so far so good this year that the bees have been pretty gentle I'm gonna try to get a little smoke to just waft over the top I don't want to blow it directly down in there but I do want some smoke to go right over the top they have lots of wax lots of honey I can see already they're putting a lot of honey in here. I want to see if there's any brood up in this area as well. This is a fat frame. Oh, that honey's just pouring out. I broke, you can see I broke that. The honey was just pouring out into the hive. That's lots of honey around the outside. They're also, they have some brood. Let's see if you can see it. Some brood in the middle on both sides. I do have my frame hanger here. I forget about, I left it out here. Some of these frames had nothing or very little on them. But let's see what they look like. Most of these plastic frames were empty. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. This is a lot of brood. This is baby bees right here. See all that pattern right there? That's baby bees. There's a little bit of honey and pollen mixed in, or uh, nectar. That looks really nice. I think they are gonna be ready for another box, but let me get through here a little bit. I did checkerboard this putting new frames in the middle of old frames which is supposed to help them build out make them want to build yeah so lots lots of good brood this the population of this hive is going to really really grow they got brood and nectar I 
I am kind of keeping an eye out for the queen. I got a lot of activity here on my hand. So they're starting to make a lot of honey and they also have a lot of brood. So they're, this, this hive so far seems to be doing really, really well. Same thing with this one. It's it's uh, they got a lot of open comb on this one, but they also have a good amount of uh, brood, the closed brood or the the capped brood, which is just baby bee. Oh, there's the queen. Can you see her? Good. All right. So what I'm going to do with this hive is I'm going to put it back together. I don't I don't need to dig around if I see that they have plenty of brood plenty of resources the queen looks healthy I don't need to do a whole lot of digging. I don't want to upset them So we're gonna close this up just by Trying to put it back together the same way we found it Now this is two deep boxes uh, which, which is the, the depth of the box these are the nine and five eighths boxes. There's two of them here I got a lot of honey on that box there. Can you see that? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give them another box on top. I think, I think they're ready. These frames have already some comb built, so that should give them a, a jump start on getting this top filled up with honey. All that spilled honey will give them something to work on. Now we'll put the camera over here on one and point to two, and we'll see how it's doing. Slight interruption there. I had to run up to the house and get a new memory card for the camera. I can see a lot of beetles. A lot of beetles in this one. I try to kill them as I see them. I know there's always more than what I see. Lots of new wax in that. You can tell new wax because it's nice and white. Lots of new wax in this one. I think they're going to be ready for another box too. I need to order more of the towels the paper cloth towels that I'm using for the beetle control. I need to order more. I ran out. Yeah, they're just putting a lot of honey up on top right now. Yeah, this is... I think this was a completely empty, empty box when I put it in. Check all that out. All that honey, all that new wax. That's gorgeous. See that big gray drone walking through the middle of it? This side's not quite as built out, but it does have some new comb on it.
That next one is mostly empty. There's, uh, they're, build, they're building, you can see they're starting to put wax on there. They're building out, building. Can't even talk today, it's too hot I guess. Uh, they're building out new wax on both sides, but it's mostly empty. So far, I think this one is gonna be, uh, unless, I might, might change my mind or change what I see when I get into the middle of it, but it looks like it's all just honey and new wax. Wow, that is a heavy, heavy frame right there. That is solid honey. It's not completely, see this side is all capped. That honey's ready to go. This one's not completely capped. That's gorgeous. Makes me want to taste it. The bees have been pretty good. I'm, I'm pleasantly somewhat surprised. I'm very, very pleasantly, uh, it's a pleasant thing to know that the bees are be behaving. So I try to put that down where I'm not smashing, but look at all that. That's all solid honey there. We're going to have a pretty decent harvest this year. And this side is mostly built out. So for everyone local that keeps asking me, when, when is the honey coming? Uh, I'm going to say it's coming soon. I don't have to harvest it right now. I can let it sit in the hive and they'll dry it out and make it perfect. I'm kind of looking through the middle just to see if they put any brood up in this top box. So far I haven't seen any. Nope. This is uncapped honey on this side. Kind of half capped, half uncapped. And lots of capped honey on this side. And I see the next frame is the same. I don't need to pull them all out. I don't see any brood in this box. I'm just gonna scoot them over and take a little look down in here. I'll pull this one out. Nope, all honey, no brood. So this whole top box, they're doing a lot of good work here. A lot of good work. All right, I'm gonna push this all back together. I'm so sweaty, my glasses are rolling down on my face. I don't know if you can pick it up in the, in the camera, but the hum right now out here between these hives is just so pleasant. They're being very calm, very well mannered, and just singing a beautiful tone. Sometimes the energy is so high the pitch gets really high and everything is just full of anxiety. They are, I am, their tone is. So I can put this one back in here. They're coming out and hitting me just a little bit. I think they're, they're warning me. They're telling me, hey, it's time to, time to close our house up. You were not invited. So they're hitting my hands a little bit. I'm trying to put this one in without rolling the bees. All right, I'm gonna see if I can take this box off and get in here and, and examine some of the brood in the lower box. It's gonna be a very heavy box. Very heavy. Now we're down where where the business is, not not the honey business, but the bee making business. This uh, last time I was out here, I put some new frames down in here and they're building up pretty nice. This is still mostly unused. Mm -hmm. 
There's a lot of bees. This is a this is a very well populated hive. And I did go every other one when I put this one together. So there's going to be a full frame and then a mostly empty frame. Man, I'm sort of squishing these bees, not squishing, but pinching them in my in my gloves, and they still haven't stung yet. That's encouraging. So there's some brood on here. A lot of nectar, some honey. I'm gonna put that one out here too. I have a little more room. I don't like to put too many on that hanger because it, uh, it doesn't hold all the weight. And I don't have to because once I slide them over, I have room to work. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a little bit more smoke because they're starting to come out and warm me a little bit. Just enough to calm them down. Maybe confuse them just a little bit. So that looks like a lot of a drone brood on the bottom, that big knobby brood, and a lot of good, uh, just normal worker brood in the middle. That must be the news helicopter flying over. Want to come out and see what Daddy Curves is doing. That's a lot of honey and nectar on this one. I don't see a lot of brood here. It's mostly just honey and nectar. Same thing on this side, honey, nectar, and pollen. I squashed a bee, that's why they're getting riled up. Sometimes when I put the frame back in, somebody gets pinched. I try really hard not to do that, but it's tough to be 100% on not killing bees. How do I know I squashed a bee? I heard her crunch, and that's that's an unpleasant sound. So that's lots of brood right there. Lots and lots of brood. You can see a lot of drones on that frame too. And some more uh, drone brood up on top of that. The real bubbly, bulby stuff. They like to come out and warn first. They, they warn you by bumping and raising their pitch. And that's kind of what's going on. One thing I don't know about this ventilated jacket is can they sting through it easily? I don't know. So far I don't think they've stung me. I haven't felt any stings. I haven't seen any stingers in my gloves or anything. So hopefully they're not stinging. That's a lot of good brood. I am, I'm very satisfied with how the hives are looking and the temperament so far. They've been really good. I haven't seen the queen and I haven't seen any brood um, for eggs, like open brood that hasn't been capped. I look for eggs to, to, to know generally if there's a queen present. I would guess just by the behavior of this hive that they, they're doing fine with the queen. A 
hive that does not have a queen, I think, uh, is a little more irritated, a little more aggressive. They have so much good brood in here. I haven't even got down into the bottom box, and I may not have to. I may leave it alone. I think I will leave it alone. I'm just going to button this one back up. There's no need to get in here and get into every frame. So I'll start pushing these back so I can put it back together and I am going to put another box on top. Yeah, that bothered him. Something. Maybe I got another one. I didn't hear it, but maybe I got another one. One more frame to put in and then we're going to try to put this one back together. Putting it on at an angle and twisting is pretty good about making it a little less risky for the bees. It's not perfect. I did get a few. I can see some of the bees. Some of these, some of the new frames in here have some uh, built some comb already. A few of them are empty, which means they're going to be foundationless. But most of them have foundation. A couple of them have some wax on them. All right, put our inner cover on. And our lid. We didn't see the queen in this one, but that's okay. Well, that's two hives down and one hive to go. The last time I was out here, that hive right there, uh, I thought may have been queenless. It had a lot of the signs of being queenless, a little more aggressive, uh, not a lot of brood, didn't see any eggs. So uh, we're going to get in and see how they look this week. Hopefully, they, uh, I was just wrong, but uh, we're going to check. I don't have a hive to put this one on, put the camera on. So you get a slightly different view. Oh, this one doesn't have a screen bottom board. Plenty of bees coming and going, and I can see plenty of bees in the top when I take that off. Plenty, plenty, plenty of bees. I'll give you a view. Let me show you what I'm seeing up here. So there's there's good activity, and it looks like there's a lot of honey. So we're gonna check it out. I'm guessing I was just wrong. Either that, or they made a new queen. It's very possible that they made a new queen. that look at that that is gorgeous gorgeous lots of honey in that one mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Wow, it is, it is uncomfortable mm -hmm. to do beekeeping when it's so hot outside. Uh, oops. All right, let me get out of here. Should have kept my veil on. Somebody came over to say goodbye. Hopefully they're not in my veil. All right. Let's drive up away from the bees. I didn't really expect that. All right, let's go, let's just go. Better turn the golf cart on. Wait a minute. Where's my glasses? There they are. Oh, how's that for a little entertainment there at the end of the beekeeping session? Almost lost my glasses. Almost got stung in the head. And uh, overall, it went really well. I'm pretty satisfied with how that beekeeping went. It's very hot, but the water and the vented jacket did do a pretty good job at keeping me cooler. Not cool, I'm sweating um, profusely right now. I was gonna say like a pig, but uh, we actually have a pig at the moment. And I haven't seen her sweat yet. Hey Maggie and Teo. Looking good. They do love their barn. You see my barn door? Looks nice, huh? Works well. Let's see if I can get dressed here again. Man, it was a lot of fun having you out there. Check this out, I don't know if you can see it. Look how my gloves are dripping. Dripping with sweat. It is literally 100 degrees, it might even be a little over. This week we're expecting 107 in the middle of the week. And uh, it's already, I feel like it's too early for that. Just right here at the end of May, beginning of June. Oh, my glasses are a mess. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. We, we live in South Texas and we know it's coming. We just don't always know exactly when and now I think this year it showed us it's gonna be early. Hopefully that doesn't mean we have, you know, exceedingly high record-breaking temperatures for long but I'm pretty sure that this week is gonna break some, some records. So you do have to be careful doing anything. Drink lots of water, speaking of that. Drink lots of water. If you're out beekeeping, find a place that you can get in the shade, drink your water between, uh, you know, if we start feeling hot or between doing your hives. And uh, wow, you can just see I'm pouring with sweat. The ventilated suit did help. Uh, it was worth the investment. I bought it on sale on Amazon. I think it was $79. And uh, it was definitely worth that money because I didn't feel like I was in a sauna. It was very hot out there, but it was like because it's hot, not because I'm wrapped up in a jacket in the heat. Uh, the ventilated suit did work really well. I'll put a link to that Amazon product in the uh, comments below. It is going to be an affiliate link, so if you decide to click on that and purchase anything from Amazon after clicking on that, I will get a small percentage of your sale. It doesn't cost you a penny more, but it will help support the Daddy Curbs farm. So for that, I thank you very much. I'm gonna take a drink. Ah, 
beautiful. All right, well, that was some beekeeping that was a little overdue, but it looks like things are okay. I'm really excited to see all three hives doing well. Each of the three hives got a, a new box, which just means they're gonna be able to start packing some honey um, up into those new boxes. There's already lots of good honey on there. Some of it I leave for them and some of it later I'll take uh, to uh, add to um, the offerings here on the farm. I still label it Golden Sun Honey. That's the label that I have back from when my son was helping me do beekeeping. He was known as the Golden Sun Beekeeper. And right now he's visiting in Norway with our friends uh, and family in Norway. We call them family. Uh, totally not related. I don't think I have any Viking blood in me. However, um, my son's having a good time over there. Uh, he's wishing me well. It's beautiful, 70 degrees and sunny. So it's a beautiful, beautiful day over there. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for giving me grace over the last however, you know, six weeks or so that because of the family challenges with Luke, uh, my son, my, my special needs son who went into the hospital and now he has a feeding tube and just trying to readjust to that type of schedule and those new, uh, those new life challenges that we have to face and then also the computer that, that was broken for a couple weeks and I had to get it fixed. It's just been a real challenge to, to do the YouTube videos. But here I'm very glad to be with you today to do another channel video and uh, yeah, get back in the groove. I need to uh, I need to do a lot of work to get back in the groove. For those of you who follow along on the Facebook family group, which is a closed Facebook group for those of you who are fans and also becoming like family of the, the Daddy Curbs content, uh, I'll put that link in the comments below as well. Be sure that if you ask to join the group, because it is a private Facebook group, uh, that you answer the questions. There should be two questions to answer in order to get into the group. And that's just our first level of filter to help make sure that everyone that gets into that group is genuinely interested in contributing in a positive way to the group. So I'd love to see you over there. We're just building that group up and getting to know each other, sharing each other's story, because I truly do believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. So thank you for being a part of my story today, and thank you for letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.